Welcome to Random Movie Reviews, I'm Nathan, and today I'll be talking about Casino. Well, I'm continuing with my Scorsese retrospective reviews. Um, Started off with Raging Bull, moved on to Goodfellas, and of course when I did Goodfellas, I got a comment or two saying, hey, you gotta do Casino next. And these are two Scorsese movies that are often paired together. I definitely see Casino being a spiritual successor to Goodfellas of sorts. Uh, The movies have numerous similarities with one another, outside of the fact that they both revolve around gangsters and crime. Uh, Both movies star De Niro and Joe Pesci. Both movies are directed by Scorsese, co-written by Scorsese, and co-written by Nicholas Pileggi, who wrote books that both of those movies were based on. For Goodfellas, it was Wise Guys, and for Casino, it was the same title, Casino. And, uh, you know, they, they both have a similar feel, a similar style, a similar energy level to one another, the way the films are constructed, the way the films uh, have documentary-esque um, styles with the amount of detail that Scorsese shows you, making it feel as authentic as humanly possible. So I can I can see why both films, more than any other Scorsese films, are often paired together. They are, they are very similar, but there are many differences as well. Uh, for a lot of Scorsese fans, Casino is kind of seen as being inferior to Goodfellas. Um, And then there are some fans, and that even mentioned this in my last uh, video of Goodfellas in the comments, that some uh, Scorsese fans uh, prefer Casino. And it seems like in more recent years, Casino has been held in higher regard. I've been seeing, personally, from my perspective, I've been seeing more and more reviews saying that this is personally their favorite Scorsese film, because they find Casino to be the most rewatchable of his works. Uh, And for a long time, I've always maintained that I thought Casino was as good as Goodfellas. Um, I, like, they're they're so similar and they're so on par quality-wise that I couldn't put one over the other. But that changed somewhat recently. I need to really clarify that I love Casino, and I've always have ever since I first watched it. But I did something that I've never done before, which is I watched Goodfellas and Casino back-to-back. And funny enough, I never, I've never done that before. And that wasn't really planned either. Like I watched Goodfellas. I was like, oh, I'll watch Casino after that. And then when I finished watching Casino, I was like, you know what? I realized I never watched them back to back like that. Like I always went to Casino because I was in that specific mood. I always went to Goodfellas because I was in that specific mood. Like I always viewed the movies separately. I never paired them together watching it like a first film in a sequel. I've never done that before. Uh, And when I did that, did make me realize that I think Goodfellas is the superior movie by a, by a slight margin. I, I The way I look at it is when it comes to Goodfellas, I have no complaints. Literally. I can't think of a single flaw for me personally. When I watch that movie, I, I don't complain about the runtime. I don't complain about the performances. All of the technical aspects, I have no complaints about whatsoever. Casino, this time around, for the first time, I have some very slight gripes, nitpicks if you will, nothing major, nothing deal breaking. I'll put it this way, I gave Goodfellas on my rewatch five out of five stars, and for Casino I would give it four and a half out of five stars. Very close to five stars, but I'll, I'll, I'll get into that later on. But first let's, let's talk about Casino, and let's talk about the some of the bigger differences between that and Goodfellas. So Casino revolves around uh, Ace Rothstein, which one of the, one of the major differences between Casino and Goodfellas is that in Goodfellas, uh, all of the characters are based off real characters and they carry the same name as those, as those characters. Casino. uh, And I, I thought I heard a reason, but I think I'm forgetting now. Uh, Casino, they changed the names of a lot of the people in the film. They also changed the name of the casino. Uh, I believe the real person that Robert De Niro is based off of is uh, Lefty Rosenthal. Uh, Lefty being his nickname. And uh, that's who Ace Rothstein is based off of. And I learned this from a channel called History Buffs. So if anyone's interested in, in seeing how accurate Casino is, which surprisingly... 
Or maybe not that surprisingly, giving uh, Scorsese's attention to detail. That movie is pretty accurate to a lot of the stuff that actually happened around Lefty Rosenthal and, and his experience with running a, a mob-ran casino. So that's one of the differences, is that uh, all of the characters, inc including Joe Pesci and I believe Sharon Stone's character, Ginger as well, their names have been changed from the real-life characters, but they are all based on real-life characters. So the movie revolves around Ace Rothstein in a casino that he's running known as the Tangiers and Ace Rothstein's background is that he was a bookie for the mob and uh, the mob was looking to expand their business in Vegas which was becoming very popular with gambling and all of that good stuff and they're like hey there's a lot of there's a lot of money to be found in this town so they decided to send one of their own someone who was the the best in terms of betting in terms of gambling somebody who understood it to a science to a T and that is Robert De Niro's character. One of the major standouts, if you compare this film to De Niro's other performances in uh, many of other Scorsese's movies, is that Ace is a much more level-headed individual. He's, he's very uh, grounded in comparison to uh, De Niro's other characters with Scorsese. He's a very kind of reasonable guy in many uh, regards. And because of that, he ends up being one of the more sympathetic characters in a uh, gangster film with uh, directed by Scorsese, where a lot of those characters aren't very sympathetic. They're, you know, they're kind of despicable, but you you're intrigued by them and you're intrigued by their lifestyle. That, that's one of the key differences is that Ace Rothstein you you end up kind of rooting for the guy but then you also end up like in my case i'm like god how could he you know trust all of his money and his wealth and his life in the hands of this gold digger uh ginger played amazingly by sharon stone that's another thing that needs to be noted is that sharon stone kind of ends up stealing the show that's not to say that de niro and pesci don't do great jobs they absolutely do for joe pesci this is kind of business as usual when you see joe pesci as a gangster his performance in this movie is Nicky, uh, in comparison to his performance as Tommy in Goodfellas. They're about the same. So that's not that's not too out of his wheelhouse. Joe Pesci in The Irishman. Now that's that's a significant change in terms of Joe Pesci playing a completely different type of gangster. But in terms of his character in Casino and Goodfellas, they're pretty much more or less the same. But either way, as great as Pesci is in this movie and De Niro is, Sharon Stone is is kind of the real highlight in terms of just a performance. Her character, Ginger, is completely unhinged. She is a uh, kind of a scam artist, and she ends up meeting Ace in uh, in one of his casinos at, at when, she, when he witnesses her stealing chips, and he is just blown away by her beauty because, let's face it, it's 90s Sharon Stone, kind of peak sexiness right there. She is absolutely gorgeous. And he ends up falling for her for pretty much completely superficial reasons. She's incredibly attractive, but also she is, uh, you know, she she knows money. She's she's kind of a scam artist, and he felt he feels like he can use those skills to his benefit, but it ends up taking him to the cleaners. And then he, she has a tie to her previous life, which she was a prostitute, and she has a connection to James Woods. Uh, I forget his character's name, but he is a, he is a pimp that she is pretty much in love with because he was grooming her at 14 years old. Ugh, pretty gross. I mean, it's Vegas, it's the mob, it gets pretty nasty. But uh, you end up, I end up feeling sympathy for her character in the beginning of the movie because it's like, you know, she's she's a drug addict, she's an alcoholic, she has been, clearly has a, a troubled past. She's been groomed and scammed by James Woods and, you know, she's like in love with him but he just uses her for pretty much anything he wants. And then later on, as the movie gets more and more insane, as her relationship with Ace just starts to deteriorate, and Nikki ends up getting caught into the mix, uh, I end up really hating her character, uh, and she becomes like one of the most hateable uh, Scorsese characters, maybe ever, towards the end of this movie. Like, towards the end of this movie, I, I can't stand Ginger. But it's interesting, her progression through this film is fascinating because, like I say, I do have some sympathy with her, even though she's clearly a damaged individual, but she just goes off the rails. And that's one of the biggest differences between Casino and Goodfellas, and that even Scorsese has said this. In Goodfellas, uh, Scorsese says he's he's really just showing you the life. He's not focusing on any particular character. I mean, Henry Hill, he brings us 
into this world and he shows us everything about it. And so because of that, he ends up being the main focus, but he's not really like, we don't really dissect his character all that much because Henry Hill is a pretty surface level gangster character and, and it works perfectly for Goodfellas. One of the biggest differences between Goodfellas and Casino is that Casino focuses more on its characters. We get a little bit more in depth with the characters. We get more involved with the relationships, specifically the three main relationships, which is Ace, uh, Nikki, and Ginger, and how their kind of twisted relationship triangle ends up bringing down uh, all of the mob's ties in Vegas. And it is fascinating, all of that stuff. The, mo the, the movie's three hours long, but it moves. Like Goodfellas, they have remarkably similar pacing in terms of once this movie goes, you're just, boom, you're, you are shot out of a cannon. The opening of Goodfellas, Billy Bats stabbed in a trunk in the opening of Casino. Uh, Ace gets blown up in his car and it's like, boom, here we go. We're getting into it. But since I brought up the opening scene, as I was watching both of these movies back to back, Casino had a little bit of cracks that showed that were showing to me for the first time that I didn't really pay all that much attention to. But I think since I'm really comparing this to Goodfellas, it just it shows to me that Goodfellas is a superior film. So I'll get I'll get a little bit into my nitpicks. The first one is very nitpicky. It's not that big of a deal, but the, that opening scene where Scorsese clearly wants to do a single shot of Ace walking to his car, blowing up, and then of course the film does like a mini cut and we see Robert De Niro magically turn into a dummy. The car blows up. That scene has always bothered me. And because there's no equivalent to that in Goodfellas, it's like, eh, it's a little bit of a ding on the movie, nothing major. Then we get into the more uh, broader uh, things. For example, I think Goodfellas has stronger pacing than Casino. I think it's a little bit more uh, streamlined. I think it's a little bit more focused. Casino is giving you so much information that sometimes it can feel just a little bit bloated, or at least in comparison to Goodfellas, where it's like that movie is a very lean, movie where it's long but it's like every, everything in that movie is just it's it's perfect and then there's just a little moments in casino where i feel like certain scenes go on for too long or we're spending a little bit too much time with side characters that aren't that integral to the plot um but i understand why it's there and it's it's just in, I'm, like i'm saying in comparison to goodfellas that's a little ding and then the other m kind of bigger thing that i noticed was the use of music in casino in comparison to the use of music in goodfellas now there are brilliant needle drops in Casino, like House of the Rising Sun is probably the best example, which is how the movie kind of wraps up with that song lingering in the background while we see the, the demise of our three main characters. That's used beautifully. There's other great musical cues like uh, Can You Hear Me Knockin' by the Rolling Stones, Whip It by Devo, and the other Devo song, can't, their version of Can't Get No Satisfaction. But overall, there is so much pop music in the background of Casino, almost, it, for its entire runtime, it was becoming kind of distracting how uh, Scorsese would play a pop song and then it would just kind of collide into another pop song and it just kept doing that for its three hour runtime. And to be honest, it got a little bit distracting as I was watching it because in Goodfellas, the, the music cues feel uh, a little bit more planned, a little bit more structured. The only time where the music gets hectic is specifically during the whole segment of when Henry is his last day before he gets arrested where Scorsese wants to show you the chaos and the confusion and the paranoia that Henry is dealing with. And so the way he uses music in that scene with the way he goes from like uh, jump into the fire by uh, Harry Nilsson. And then it goes into what is my life by George Harrison. Then it goes into that Mick Jagger song. Then it goes into that blue song. It's like, it's creating chaos. And for that scene, it works uh, beautifully, but it's not like that for the entire movie. For Casino, it's kind of like that for the entire movie. I know most people probably wouldn't care about that. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal because Casino is pretty much a perfect crime movie, v uh, very much up to the level of Goodfellas, but not quite uh, equalizing it or you getting above the perfection of Goodfellas, in my opinion. But those are just the little things that stood out to me. Where Casino really succeeds is just, A, we get the same documentary-like detail that we were shown in Goodfellas. You know, like the first hour of Casino might be my favorite segment of the movie, where it's like, Scorsese's giving us this amazing detail of how a mob casino is run. One of the best scenes in the whole movie is how Ace 
spot scammers at his casino. Uh, we catch these two guys, and he's he's like, the, the dealer's holding his card too high, but he wasn't in on it. We see that guy, he's looking at him. He's remote signaling to his buddy that's doing like, um, that's doing a Morse code tapping on his leg. That's the way that scene is edited and filmed and structured, it, like, that's amazing. And it looks amazing, but it's also just fascinating. And there's just so many moments where Scorsese is just showing you every facet of a mob casino. And that's that all of that is my favorite aspects. And then when we get into the 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 complicated relationships between Ace and Nikki and Ginger and how that all just creates this fiery chaos that ends up bringing down the mob. I mean, it's so good. It, it's so there's not a dull moment in this movie. It moves way too quickly for it to be a dull moment. And that might be another very minor gripe is that there are moments in Goodfellas where it kind of slows down and it lets the drama breathe a little bit and it creates some tension where Casino is pretty much go, go, go the entire time. There's not a whole lot of moments when the movie slows down. There are a few, there are a few standout moments like the scene where Ace throws Ginger out of the house or uh, the, the great scene, one of the most iconic scenes where Ace and Nikki are talking in the desert. That's one of my favorites. But the movie is pretty relentless in terms of breakneck pace. And I do wish there were some moments where it would kind of slow down and just let the drama breathe a little bit. But it, Scorsese's giving you so much that it's like you don't have time to really kind of process a lot of the craziness that's happening in the moment and you kind of think about it afterwards. That was my reaction when I first saw Casino. But yeah, it really is. I, I can I totally understand why some people prefer Casino over Goodfellas. For one, visually the movie is much more extravagant. You have much more uh, ambitious and epic-looking set pieces. The costumes in this are amazing. I absolutely love De Niro's incredibly flamboyant but awesome-looking suits that no one can really pull off except for De Niro in this movie. I mean, the suits he wears in this movie are simultaneously ridiculous looking and badass. And I don't know how De Niro does it. I don't know how he pulls it off, but he does. You just, you buy it. So all the costumes in this, I love I love Sharon Stone's outfits. Or like the costume design, the sets, um, just there's a, there's a vibrance and in, in colorful energy that Casino has that feels different from Goodfellas. It's very vibrant. And so that alone, I could see people kind of preferring Casino. And the movie is, super rewatchable. I've logged this movie into my letterbox three times and I started letterbox in late 2021, which means I've almost watched this movie annually without even thinking about it. I've logged Goodfellas the same amount of time. So Casino definitely ranks as being one of my personal favorite Scorsese movies. Um, but when I watched it back to back with Goodfellas, cause for a long time I thought they were on par. But I do, I do give Goodfellas just a slight edge. To me, it's a bit more focused. It's a bit more streamlined with its pacing and its narrative. Um, and because of that, it, it feels a little bit more effective to me. But Casino, man, it's so... It's just, you feel alive watching that movie. It's like, it feels like you did cocaine. <laughs> it's a hectic movie, man. But that's what I love about it. I love the energy. God, Casino kicks so much ass. It's so good. But I can't say it's better than Goodfellas. Goodfellas still ranks as my personal favorite all-time Scorsese movie. Uh, if I were to do a top five, yeah. I think Casino would probably be in my top five. It's, it would have to squeeze in there because it is hands down, along with Goodfellas, uh, one of the most rewatched Scorsese movies for me. But tell me what your guys' thoughts are, Casino. Uh, do you love it? Is it your favorite Scorsese movie? Do you think it's better than Goodfellas? Uh, if so, why? Um, what other Scorsese movies would you like to hear me talk about? And as always, thank you for watching.